Welcome to Tea Time with Chris, a podcast that celebrates faith, humor, and the power of storytelling. I'm Chris Tomlinson, your host, and I'm thrilled to invite you to join me for engaging conversations with people from all walks of life. Together, we'll sip some tea, or whatever you prefer, and explore life's joys and challenges with a focus on hope, inspiration, and positivity. I'll also share some of my personal stories and some poetry to add a touch of intimacy and creativity to our chats. So join me as we spread love, joy, and laughter with each episode. Welcome to Tea Time with Chris. Today, I have a pretty special episode. I got the chance to sit down and interview a dear friend of mine who I have known pretty much all my life, almost, I guess. Uh, We met years ago when we were still in like school and everything. And we've had tons of memories to share together. And every time we're together, it's filled with laughs and just constant laughter, which, which you'll see in this episode. But before we jump in, we have to get to the tea flavor of the week. This week's tea flavor is hibiscus, and it originates from actually multiple regions, including Africa, Asia, and the Caribbean. It's made from the vibrant crimson-colored calluses of the hibiscus flower. It has a tart and tangy flavor, reminiscent of cranberries or sour cherries, with a slightly floral undertone. It can be enjoyed hot or ice, and its vibrant color adds a visually appealing touch to any tea experience. It's naturally caffeine-free and is known for its high levels of antioxidants, including flavonoids and vitamin C. Benefits include supporting heart health, promoting healthy digestion, and potentially aiding in managing blood pressure. I'm pretty sure I've had it before, and it wasn't bad. So, yeah, I'm excited to jump into this episode because it was so fun to record and it was hilarious. <laughs> and there's so many laughs. I hope you guys enjoy it along with me. And so without further ado, let's jump into today's episode. You give my number. <laughs> I'm Jessica. I am gonna be 36. I have two kids, Natalia, who is going to be 16 in November, and my son EJ, who just turned six, and he's autistic and keeps me active (laughs) on my toes all the time i am married i am coming up to 10 years of marriage in december we're renewing our vows in december nice what else about me i mean there's a lot i'm crazy yeah although crazy people don't don't know they're crazy so maybe (laughs) i'm not really crazy (laughs) yeah maybe we'll let the doctors decide (laughs) <laughs> well they have established i'm crazy <laughs> um, <laughs> no i have got, what, bipolar and depression and anxiety and ptsd and i'm a huge advocate for mental health especially young teenage girls um that's when i have my biggest issue so i know that You know, I kind of know what they're going through and whatnot. I have a mental health group with my church and I focus mainly on, you know, adolescent girls, but anyone from like, even if they're like nine years old and having issues or they're 90 and having issues, like I, I'm there if they need me, you know, even if it's a 10 minute, Hey, I just need to yell at someone, you know, I know it's not at me. So I'm good. You can yell at me. You're good. I love my church. I love my pastor. 
I am a Episcopalian. I almost said it wrong. (laughs) (laughs) When uh, before COVID, I was an altar server and I was trying to work on becoming a priest myself or whatever females are called. I I, I think we can still be priests, right? I guess so. In video Uh, games, your priestess is... (laughs) (laughs) Bad video games. This is the real world we're talking about. (laughs) You got to be serious. Yeah. Um, But I ended up having a second and third back surgery, so that kind of pushed everything back. Wasn't able to, you know, do the first steps of becoming a priest or whatever. So that kind of got pushed back, but I'm working towards becoming like an actual um, Episcopalian Christian therapist. So it's legit with my church, not just, you know, me, Hey, let's talk. Um, So it's legit and faith, like definitely faith-based sessions. You know, Mm -hmm. I definitely believe not just with, You know, not just with females, but I believe that men need a lot more recognition for like their mental health. Like men need it a lot more than women because we can talk. We can talk about it and it's okay. But once a guy starts talking about it, you're either a baby or, you know, you got to suck it up. Like you're a guy, you got to be tough. I think the, the mental health care in this country is awful. Yeah. On both sides, but especially more with men, it's awful. Mm-hmm. So, like, I I have no problem speaking out about trying to get better health care for mental health, especially with suicide awareness. I am a suicide attempt survivor times three. That's huge. Before COVID, me and Eddie were doing walks for suicide awareness prevention it was in Easton. It's kind of like, just like a mile. It was like in a park, did like a mile walk. I, I want to do the one that's in Boston. I think that, I think it was like 26 miles. I think mm-hmm. it's like a three day thing. Kind of like the pan mass challenge. It's kind of like that. It's like a three day walk and they call it out of the darkness. And I really want to do that. I know that's going to take some work yeah. for me to get to walk three days 26 miles because my back is awful i can barely walk down the street without having to lay down for three days do you remember that organization or whatever you call it called uh to write love on our arms no it used to be huge when we were when we were teenagers or no, we were teenagers how old were we were like in our 20s probably we were in school no were we in school? I can't remember. It was a while ago. But anyways, um, it was a long time ago. <laughs> it was. It was. They do like the suicide help and stuff like that, and it, it's based off of this one girl who committed suicide, and she had you know markings and stuff on her arms. Mm-hmm. So that's why it was called to write love on her arms, and it was in remembrance of her. And they had like a huge, or they used to bring out bracelets and all kinds of stuff during that time and i thought it was like like i thought i think it's coming back i I thought it had been gone because i hadn't heard from in a while i just Mm -hmm. saw yesterday someone shared a post that they're doing a walk for to write love on our arms i'm like no way it's still around (laughs) pretty cool i used to love they had like the they sold the wristbands at like hot topic and stuff like that Mm -hmm. like big white letters to write love on our arms and all kinds of stuff it was cool when Hot Topic used to be scary. Yeah, when it used to be cool. <laughs> <laughs> now it's too bright. <laughs> like I walk by it and I feel like a vampire. I'm like, <laughs> where before, when I was a kid, I remember my mom used to hate it and I'd want to go in and she'd be petrified of the place. <laughs> and I'd take one step in and she'd be like, oh my gosh, Christopher. <laughs> I mean, it's really not that bad, Mom. They just put the lights lower, that's all. She yeah. walks in, and, like, the music's like, that. You know? <laughs> She's like, no, Christopher. I was telling Natalia how it used to be, because she shops there now. Like, I explained to her, I was like, it used to be scary. Like, now they play, like, normal music, 
<laughs> but when I was younger, <laughs> it was scary. Like, I'm just like, yeah, I think I need an adult. <laughs> I need an adult. I was like 16. And even like, adults were afraid to go in there, though. Right? I remember, like, watching parents walk by and they, like, grab their kids away and, hold, <laughs> like, hold them, like, protecting them. Like, something was going to come out and grab them and they walked by. And, like, gee, they'd walk on the total opposite side of the mall and be like, <laughs> and even adults were like, nope. There was one time I went to a um a concert with a friend to see uh this one metal band and they had this one band come up before and the lead singer gets up and he had like one of those like beanies on, like mm-hmm. really big beanies. And when he gets up on the stage, he takes it off and his hair is like like super long all the way down. And like, holy crap. And like we're watching the show, and I think it was the next day, and this was like in Boston. So then the next day I go to Silver City in Taunton, the mall. Mm-hmm. I go into Hot Topic and the cash the cashier looked really familiar. And I walk up to the cashier and I'm buying my stuff and I look at him like, hey, are you in a metal band? And he like gave me a look and he's like, maybe. How do you know? I'm like, Were you, at this? <laughs> you had such and such last night opening for this one band. And he's like, yeah, that's my band. I'm like, no way. This is amazing. I was like, I was there. I saw you. And he's like, really? I'm like, yeah. He got, gave me his MySpace info and everything. <laughs> we, would hang out. we would talk on MySpace and stuff. It was awesome. Oh, I miss MySpace. I loved MySpace, man. Yeah. So when we all and learned how to code. Yeah. And we were all professionals at it. Oh, yeah. We were. And all the animations and colors and yep. songs, all the and music, music playing. And although people would get so mad if they weren't in your top eight. Oh my gosh, yeah. Or if they were low on the top eight. Like, why is this person ahead of me on yeah. your top eight? Like, I thought we and, were better friends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so much. I don't drama. see my picture there. Yeah. <laughs> it was so, so much drama, but you know oh, what? Yeah. It was awesome. It was. It was. It was fun drama. Like Facebook drama is, mm. Mm. but MySpace drama was, yes. You know the best. Yeah. <laughs> and then what? All those like stupid away messages that I that we used to put up. Oh my word! Our own. All the lyrics and everything, <laughs> song lyrics, and be like today's artist, and just list out the whole thing. I had like so many categories of away messages. So like I had like seven school away messages, yeah. like like six or seven sleeping messages, like eating, like whatever, like whatever yeah. food I was in, I just picked it, like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then, you know, it was always hit up the Sally like once I got a cell phone, <laughs> yeah. and put our stupid number on. The- yeah, for everyone to see. <laughs> But why were we making away messages for school when everybody else was in school too? <laughs> like, <stupid. laughs> like why? Why? Like we'd come home, there'd be no messages because everybody's in school. Right. And, but it would be sure. so depressing. Like you come home and be like, no one messaged me. And like you're not even uh, thinking that no one messaged because we were all in school in talking. School. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was when we were still in school when we used to chat online. Yeah, right? we didn't chat. We didn't chat much, but yeah. Yeah. And I would come yeah, it over. Definitely wasn't the, a lot. That's, um, that's when you didn't have a lot of self confidence, and um, you're like, yeah, you know, I don't talk to people. I'm in, you know, my own little bubble. Blah blah blah. Like, I was yeah. just like, yeah, you know what? It's cool. Whatever you want to talk, we could talk. Whatever. Thank and you. I remember always, always doing my best to try to build up your self esteem, like. <laughs> always it was impossible back then yes it was you were very down and depressed very but i i will still say to this day that the first time we started talking and then the first time i met you you were my hero and i look up to you dude always i will never ever go against that like you some people have Superman that they think is their hero. Some people have, you know, police, fire, EMS. No, nope, you are my hero. No. Yep. I don't know what to say. <laughs> you don't gotta say anything. My eyes are 
um, allergies. I think someone's cut uh, onions. Allergies, yeah. Oh, someone's cut uh. onions around here. You remember when we were driving around and and you were singing at the top of your lungs for, yeah. in the car? Sing John Deere Green. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was. I still have that video. It's on my phone. That was such a fun night. <laughs> I'll randomly pull it up and be like, oh my gosh, Chris. Yes. <laughs> that was so awesome. <laughs> when you, when we were talking about doing this interview the next day, well, and I told you that I was thinking of doing for a while, like I've been thinking of doing a podcast and stuff. The next day on my Facebook memories was, I'm thinking of doing a podcast. What would like y'all want to listen to? Like, what, what do you want to hear me talk about? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yo, <laughs> Like, it was just weird that, like, we talked about it, and I said, oh, yeah, I want to do that. And then the next day on my memories, it was like, oh, crap. <laughs> okay, so I, it's not going to make sense right at first, but it will at the end. But I'm in this group in, on Facebook, and it's um, all about, like, you know, planning, like having a planner, decorating it, you know, like, fun stuff um and every year people at the beginning of the year pick a word that is going to be their inspiration for the whole year a lot of people do like you know hope or like responsibility something like that and some type of adjective mm -hmm. and this year i chose the word one o-n-e not like you know winning and for me <clears throat> i have found that when i'm having really bad days like when i'm really overwhelmed um or really depressed or really anxious if i do nothing it gets worse and it's a downward spiral and then like you know i'll see a sink full of dishes and i get overwhelmed with that and i just say screw it i'm not doing it so, or like a pile of laundry or a dirty room or something. And to me, if there's 40 dishes in the sink and it's too much for me, if I wash one dish, that's an accomplishment for that day. And I don't have to do anything the rest of the day. It's that one thing that was done. Because once you start with one, you're going to continue to move forward. You've got mm. to take that first step. Mm. Lately, I've been able to get bigger number ones. So like it started with folding one shirt or doing one dish or something very, very minuscule. And now it's, I will clean one room today. Mm. And that whole room is top to bottom, left to right, inside, outside, cleaned deep cleaned and then that gives me motivation for the next day to do another room mm. and it's always one no matter what i'm not gonna clean the kitchen and the bathroom it's one and that's it i have had to tell myself that i'm not lazy underproductive it's Today, I'm using all the energy I have just to be awake, just to get out of bed. Mm. So one thing at a time is what's going to make it easier. It's going to help give me some fuel back to have a little more energy. Mm. And the more you do one, the more it adds up. Mm. Just like, you know, when you're saving money, if you were to save one dollar a day the end of the year you're gonna have 365 dollars right which it's way more than you started with in the beginning of the year yeah all the little things add up it's the little steps it's the small things that will end up making the whole puzzle mm -hmm. and i have been trying to trying to like instill that into like eddie and like my friends and everything and even to myself like even telling myself one thing i don't care what you do today do one thing 
Right. Then we can sit on the couch and watch TV all day. I don't care because I still need pep talks sometimes. Mm-hmm. And with all of my mental illnesses, like I explained in the beginning, it's hard. Like, you know, you have such anxiety about a lot of things that are going on. And then you have the depression that just is not a good combination, you know? Yeah. And you, like, I know I start thinking like, once I start getting down and depressed, my anxiety kicks in and confirms my depression. Mm-hmm. And then it's just a vicious cycle. And it's so hard to get out of that. Mm-hmm. And that's why I say one thing just, and I know I sound very repetitive, but that's my word is one. And, you know, that's how I I'm trying to live this year. A couple of years ago during mental health awareness month, which is in May, I had decided that like I had come up with a quote and it was my quote for the rest of the year. And it was, I may have mental illnesses, but they do not have me. Okay. And that put me in control. Mm-hmm. I finally like was in a world where I have no control over what goes on. And in my mind where a lot of times I lose control, I took control back and it's, you know what? Yeah, you may be here, but you don't have me in a hold. Right. I'm not going to let you take over my life. Yeah. And like I started getting to the point where like if I felt depressed, it was like, you know what? okay we're gonna sit in this depression for one hour we're gonna deal with it we're gonna cry whatever we're gonna do but at the end of that one hour we're done we're letting it go Mm -hmm. because if you don't it's going to consume and control you Mm -hmm. and that's not good my advice to someone would be if you start feeling down and you can feel yourself going in that downward spiral, try to reach out, Mm -hmm. you know, message a friend, even if it's like, hi, how you doing? And you don't talk about what's bothering you. You just shoot the breeze. Yeah. That's going to help snap you out of it. And I know it's hard in that moment to even think about messaging somebody. Like I know that a lot of people will snicker and sneer at religion and whatnot, but I have no problem proclaiming my faith and, you know, taking hold of it. I never used to be religious. It was, I was, I was the opposite. And then one day I met an amazing pastor who changed my life and it, I I can't imagine my life without God. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I would never push it on someone. Right. Um, But I would say to people who, who, you know, if you don't believe in God, you don't believe in God. But I would say to people that, you know, reach to a higher power than you, Mm -hmm. whether it's God, whether it's the universe, whether it's, you know, the goddesses of the planets, like something reach to a higher power than you, because we are nothing but specks in this universe. Right. And we can't do it alone. Right. And we're not supposed to do it alone. Right. Whatever struggles you're going through, whatever hardships, like if you do believe in God, pray about them. Mm-hmm. Pray the good days, pray the bad days, pray it all. If you don't, find someone to lean on, find something to talk to, yell and scream at the moon for all I care. It just something to get it out. because it's completely unhealthy to have those thoughts, to have those feelings, to, you know, to let yourself settle into that. And that definitely would be my insight on anyone who's struggling. And if you are struggling, I know that the people listening don't know me from a hole in the wall, but I have no problem answering messages and helping someone get through something because that is my therapy as well. Yeah. Helping other people is helping me because I feel I have a purpose. Exactly. So 
anyone that's listening, male, female, old, young, you want to reach out to somebody, reach out. Mm -hmm. I don't say anything. I don't say anything to anybody about what's told to me. You know, you can talk to me in confidence, most likely never, ever going to meet me. So it could be like, you know, I'm just this bot therapist that you're talking to, like, <laughs> but you know, who has emotion at the same time, <laughs> but it's, you know, I, I don't ever want anyone to suffer in silence Yeah, because I have, and I know what yeah. it feels like. And, you know, I would help my worst enemy mm -hmm. if they were really down to that point that they reached out to me, I would help them. No problem. Yeah. Because I don't care who you are. No one should feel like that. Right. Right. That's my, my deep thoughts. <laughs> words, words of wisdom. <laughs> I can then relate with a lot of that that you said because I have the anxiety and depression too and mm -hmm. I know what it's like to struggle alone too and not want to talk to nobody because you almost feel ashamed like you almost feel like a burden yeah like you don't want other people to have to deal with what you're dealing with and it's your issue right. so why should they have to deal with it right and, and you know people are going through their own things and you don't want to add and you know exactly I mean, how many times have we had that conversation? Like, what? I know you're going through your own stuff, Jesse. I don't want to bother you. And it's, nope, bother me. Let's go. Yeah. Like, because in that moment, I can shut off what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. You know, and even like as best friends, like it took you forever to open up to me. So I'm not expecting strangers to open up to me. But at the same time, reach someone reach out like you yeah. know i am here to help and i mean i don't want to put words in your mouth but i know that you can attest that i'm here to help and yeah. in any way that i can any way possible if i can do it i'm gonna do it right right yeah it's very important to reach out because like you said we're not meant to do this alone and we need we need each other right because it takes a village. <laughs> it much. does. <laughs> so, it really does. Because really, it feels like it's a village in your head at the time. So uh -huh. you need a village to attack that and yep. get through it. I know for me, like I had to, like it took me a while to get to where I am today, like to be able to be like Chris and yeah. not hide away from everybody. And right. I, and one of my big things is I had to make sure i remind myself daily of the good things that are going on in my life because yes. i'm so focused on the negative that i'm just blind to all the, the good thing going on yep. even when bad things are happening there's still good happening too but you're going through such bad that you're just blind to all the good stuff right you're and, like blocking out the positive right so like i had to force myself to be like, all right, Chris, you wake up each morning and think of three things that brings you happiness and makes you smile or whatever, and just focus on those three things yeah. the rest of the like for the rest of the day. And it was always my kids and God and just being alive after what I went through. Like I shouldn't be alive. So right. why shouldn't I be happy about that? And right. So I had to remind myself every day and and it's not something that happens right away like it's a, it's it a takes work. time uh it takes work because there were days i woke up like literally like the day after i was fine and i wouldn't remember to hi chris take a moment and think of yep. three things and just focus yeah right? sometimes i just get up and just go about my day and just be like everything's bad nothing's good yeah my brother and, tells me to pace myself yeah. Positive attitude changes everything. It does. It really and does. That whole thing with you waking up in the morning and thinking of three positive things, no matter what happens throughout the day, subconsciously, consciously, whatever, you're going to be a lot more positive about it because that was the first thing you thought of. Right. Your positive attitude is going to change everything about that day. Right. And then I also, I do pray every morning like before i 
touch my phone before I touch the floor. I pray and thank God for the day and thank him, you know, for giving me the life that I have and thank him for everything. And I ask him, you know, give me the strength to go yep. through this day because I'm like, dude, I can't do this by myself. Like, right. I know you have first seats to what's going on in my mind. You know what I'm doing, man. Like I need your help. Yeah. And I do that every morning and it helps for me. I spent time with my creator and he's there to help me. And then I take a time where I just ignore him and he's like, okay, if you think you're good, I'll let you, I'll let you do right. it. Right. Right. And then I come back to him like, all right, I, I was wrong. <laughs> yeah. And the, the great thing about that is he's still there. Yeah. No matter how, how far we step away, no matter how far we fall, no matter how often we don't pray, he's still there. One of my, one of my favorite I don't want to call it a gospel song, Christ, Christian song. I don't know. Faith-based song um, is Strong Enough by Matthew West. Mm -hmm. And it's it's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. And then I just had the name in my head and I lost it. But her name is Lauren something. Lauren Deagle or something like that? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. One of the songs she has is like my second favorite. Like in any time those come on my phone and they always seem to come on at the right time. Yep. Like I belt them out. Those two um, and How Great Thou Art when Carrie Underwood sings it. Mm -hmm. Top of my lungs and something in the water. I sang something in the water at church and it, to me, it, it felt like my life, like, yeah. you know, never really believed it. I finally got baptized. There's something in that water that made me different. And, yeah. you know, now I'm open and accepting and, you know, those four songs are like my top go-to songs but there's fun like i don't play them purposefully they're spontaneous they'll come on yeah. when i need them the most yeah and in those moments i'm like you know what thank you i needed that like yeah. and and he knows i need it yeah so well, he always comes at the perfect time when you least expect it and it's just like i got you like, yep oh okay cool there's been times that i you know, have been down or whatever. And I go to the store and I turn the corner and Pastor Moses is right there. And it's the weirdest thing. Like it's a random store. Don't expect to see him. And bam, he's there. And it's like, God went, Hey, I put him in your path in the beginning. And here he is again, because you need it because yeah. I'm going to speak through him to you. Yeah. And like it's, and then after it, it's a quick five minute interaction. So we can, and then we go about our day. And afterwards, I'm like, I feel better. I feel yeah. lifted. I feel, and like it's just, he was God's conduit at that point. Right. Now it blows my mind how oh, I went through a stage of trying to disprove everything about God, like yeah. everything I didn't want to. I didn't want to believe any of it. I was so mad. I just wanted everyone to hate him. I remember and, that stage with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had that same stage. <laughs> <laughs> and it just blows my mind that even after me trying to literally disprove him, he just was like, yeah, I still got you. And I yep. was like, just like, why though? Like, I was so right. mean. <laughs> right. Like, I was so mean to you. Why would you? Why? Right. And it's so hard for me to understand. Like I had a conversation with my pastor about this and he brought up a good point to where like, um, it's hard for me to trust people and it's hard for me to fathom God like that because of all the things I've been through in my past. Right. And humans, we tend to associate God with how we're treated by other people. Yep. So he's like, it's perfectly normal for you to see God totally different than what he is. Right. And and then he like will go, then he went through with like telling me, you know, if he's always there, he loves you and giving me verses and stuff. And I'm just like, but why? <laughs> right. <laughs> why? You know, to summarize it all up, we're not supposed to be alone, so we shouldn't do it alone. And again, I, I know this is sounding redundant, but 
and repetitive, but you know, don't suffer in silence. Right. You know, silence is is a deadly killer. And you know, you could actually end up, even though you're not, you don't have like suicidal ideation, being that down and and not reaching out that that could kill you. Like your your brain just starts shutting down and everything is just like whatever. And and you know, again, pace yourself. Yeah. You know, that positive attitude changes everything. Right. And I will, I mean, I will give my brother credit for that. You know, Mikey, all the time, if I put something up on Facebook that, you know, I'm really down, he's always pace yourself and he'll even write it out. Positive attitude changes everything, no matter what. Like, that's his, that's his thing. And I will give him credit for that. Like, he's that's definitely something that I try to do. And that like, that's the best way to think of it is pace yourself. And at the same time, it's, it means two things, positive attitude changes everything and take it slow, slow down and take it one step at a time. And that's where the one comes in again. It's like, everything is all encompassed together. And few things I'd like to add. And, Go right ahead. <laughs> and that is, is to take time to acknowledge that one thing that you've done and yes. celebrate it. Yes. And make sure you know that you took that baby step. And it's going to take a little step at first. And you'll get there, like you said. You start gradually getting up there. and Yep. And make sure you take time to step back and acknowledge that you're doing it. And you're yes. celebrating each step because... That's what we do with babies when they walk. We right. celebrate. We don't get mad at them when they fall. Every milestone, yeah. Yeah. So just make sure you acknowledge and celebrate every tiny little step yep. that you've done to make yourself better. And then right. the other thing I want to say is towards other fellow believers is one thing I hear a lot is you, I'm sure you probably heard it too, is a lot of people will say, all you need is Jesus. And yes, that's true. But at the same time, I would like to add in how in scripture, and I like to say this a lot, and I know people have heard me say this so many times, but I don't care. I love saying this. Um, in scripture, in the very beginning, when God creates Adam, and it says in scripture that, you know, God's walking with Adam, God's with Adam, so he's not alone, but yet... Why does he say man should not be alone? And he makes Eve. Right. So for me, it's like, yes, we need Jesus. We need God. But God literally said himself, we need each other too. Right. So don't do it alone. You have to reach out and ask for help. It's okay to ask. And there's a whole stigma around asking for help too like you just look weak or whatever like you yep. mentioned earlier about the men's men's mental health like it's so hard for us too because we're looked down on and we're like no you're supposed to be tough you're not supposed yep. to ask for help yep and like you're supposed to stand alone and, yeah like yep. you're the strong one you're supposed to get through this you're fine like just yep man up you're good right and it's not that easy for us guys we no. can't just man up sometimes and right i mean i will admit there are times when i'm down where i'm like all right chris you need to stop and just be strong and get through this and just do it but right. then there are other times where it's so bad that i'm like i i have to cry i have to ask someone to just listen and just help me i need help yeah and i think i read somewhere online that like men suicide is like way higher than it's ever been yes because we just we're too scared to ask but, yeah but we need to and i really encourage people that listen to reach out to anybody that you trust don't don't just reach out to any stranger because right because someone told me recently i think it was one of my interviews or something where they're like not everybody out there has good intentions for you right but make sure you find someone that you feel comfortable with and trust and talk yep. to them. Even if it's like, to you, it might seem dumb, 
But if it bothers you enough, then obviously it's not done. Right. And you need to talk to somebody. And And the person you trust is going to understand that. And they're not going to sit there and say that, oh, that's dumb. That's stupid. You shouldn't feel that way. You know, they're going to acknowledge that with you. Yeah. And if they do treat you that way, find someone else. Right. And like you said, you're you're willing to talk to people. I'm willing to talk to anybody too to help. Yep. And I try my hardest to help. I don't have all the answers, but I try to give something. And there's sometimes where I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry, but I'm here to listen. Right. I'll and listen. sometimes that's all people need. Yeah. One of my one of my things is um like if I'm venting to Eddie. Um, or if he's venting to me, my first question is, are we problem solving or are we venting? Mm -hmm. Because that's the basis of the conversation. If you want to problem solve, then we'll work through this together. But if you just want to vent, I'm going to, I'm going to shut up and listen. Yeah. And that's it. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that's, I mean, that, that's, that's foundation. That's the rock. That's because you can't just go into a conversation and assume that the other person knows that you just want to vent. Right. You know, it's, you gotta, you gotta say it, or if you can't say it, the person who you're talking to needs to say it. Right. Are we venting or are we problem solving? Because I need to know which direction we're going. Right. And we need to not feel down on ourselves when we do have those bad days because it is okay to not be okay. Right. No one's going to be happy 24 seven. It is okay to have those feelings, but don't live there. Right. Don't stay in that moment. You gotta, yeah. You acknowledge it. You work through it however you need to, and you let it go. Right. Pastor Moses always tells me that if I'm whatever mood I'm in, give it a name, because if you don't name it, you can't acknowledge it. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't have a name, you don't know how to get rid of it. Mm-hmm. So you name it, you acknowledge it, you work through it, and you let it go. Mm-hmm. And those are the four main steps. And that first one is the most important. You name it. Mm-hmm. That's how you're going to be able to feel better about yourself. I will say that if there is anyone who doesn't feel like they can actually verbalize and talk to someone for Easter, I got a burn book, burn after writing book. Mm -hmm. So it's like a journal and, you know, you commit to writing in it. You commit to telling the truth in this book, no matter what, no matter the hard, how hard it is to tell the truth. And then as soon as you're done with it, you light it on fire. There's a matchbook right on the front that you just light it on fire and burn it. Mm. No one else has to read it. You never have to think about it again if you don't want to. I mean, you don't have to burn it, but that's the whole point is to get all of those hard truths, the negativity out and let it go. Like just burn it away. I do suggest it to anyone who can't verbalize. Mm. Writings are really good way to get things out you know for me it is yeah writing poems or even stories that have nothing to do with what i'm going through but just to be yeah like my own little entertainment i guess in my head right my own little world and just write stuff and i'm able to put things better in writing than i can verbally speaking right and that's how it is for honestly a lot of people and because well, I mean, sometimes when you, just when you start to get to talking, you can't think of the right word or like the anxiety comes out for me. Once my anxiety comes out, I start to stutter yeah. and then yeah. I feel self-conscious yeah. and then the stuttering gets worse and then I can't talk. Mm-hmm. And it just gets to the point where I physically cannot talk anymore yeah. because I just I'm stumbling over my words and I'm I'm choking on my words and you know, so it's so much easier to just write because I don't have to worry about anyone hearing those words. Right. I've written letters to myself. I've written letters to God. I've written letters to my grandpa who passed years ago. And most of the time I write them and then I rip them up and throw them away. Mm-hmm. And 
especially the letters to myself. I've written letters to my younger self, mm-hmm. you know, apologizing to her for everything that she had to go through. You know, it's time to put to to put those weights down to to get those that weight off your shoulders. It, it's time. I'm sorry mm-hmm. you had to suffer, but you know what? We made it to where we are, and I can help you let go of that weight. Good advice. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Of course it is. (laughs) No, thank you. (laughs) And I want to, I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to do this with you. Thank you. It was fun. It's always fun to talk to you. Oh, a hundred percent. I agree. Lots of laughs. Oh yeah. Lots of, you know, deep connection. And so I say, you're my hero and you're my best friend. We've got that just that connection and you know it doesn't matter how much time passes between us seeing each other we just jump right back into where we left off and yeah so i think it's prayer time yeah who do you want me to pray about yeah like a wrap-up prayer good night prayer kind of thing I have mean, never done this before, so... Do you want me to try? <laughs> I don't care. I mean, you can do one, and I can do one, and I can just do one. I don't mind. All right, well, you know what? We both can do one, because I know I need to pray more, so... Okay. Do you want to go first, or you want me to go first? It's up to you. You want me to go first? I'll go first. You go first. <laughs> you want me to go first? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I thank you for tonight, and I thank you that... You have blessed me with such great friends like Jesse Lord, and I pray that you'll just be with her and watch over her and help her as she goes through her daily life routines and just every normal thing. And just pray that you'll just strengthen her, provide her with your peace that nobody else can provide, Lord. I just pray that you'll just touch her and just hold her tightly and let her know that you're there with her through everything. I thank you for blessing her with her kids, Lord. And I know sometimes kids can be really rough. And I know she experienced things different than I ever would. I don't know what it's like to raise a son with autism or anything. And to see the way she's going and the amount of strength she has to be such a good mother, Lord. And I just thank you that you have blessed her and help her through these times to raise her kids and continue to raise them the way she is and just provide them with the knowledge that she's so full of, Lord, and just continue to be with her and be with Eddie as as he works and just provide him with safety and help him to know that you're with him as well, Lord. And then you just wrap your arms around this whole family and just you just bless them natalia too lord and just continue to help jesse with natalia and just help that you continue to help natalia grow up healthy and strong and amazing as she is as i see lord and just continue to just to be with them lord and i thank you for everything that you have done and you will continue to do even though we may feel like we don't deserve it but for some reason in your eyes you, you just give it to us for some reason and I thank you for your grace and your mercy that I can't even understand and I can't even fathom how you could even be that way but I'm so glad you are and I thank you so much for that Father God I thank you for this opportunity again to be able to talk to Jesse for this podcast and I pray that you'll just bless this episode and that if it's your will, it can reach people and plant a seed in their hearts to know you better and come to know you maybe for the first time and maybe a way they never expected, Lord. And I just pray that even for those who may not want to hear about you, that you'll just even still be with them because I know even non-believers, you're still helping and you're still with, Lord. And you're just so lovable and that it's just amazing and awe-inspiring that you have that amount of love. And I thank you again, and I pray that you'll just watch over us tonight as we sleep, give us sweet dreams, and nourish us so that we wake up feeling energetic and well-rested and help me and Jesse to actually sleep 
tonight, Lord, that you know our struggles, you know, that we just lay there and we want to sleep, Lord. We want to sleep so bad and our minds just run, our bodies just like, no. But I know that if you just touch us and provide us with your peace, Lord, it will just help us sleep and we'll feel so much better rejuvenated tomorrow. So again, I thank you again and just be with us tonight. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this amazing opportunity to be involved with this podcast with my best friend. I trust and, and know that this was done for a reason, and I know that you will get this message out and, and you will be in this message, in this podcast, more than just a verbalization of your name, Lord. You will be there in in spirit and in a, as a whole, and your presence through this whole podcast will, will manifest. And, you know, you are here with us where there where there is more than one you're there you are always there with us lord and i thank you for always being there no matter what no no matter how far we fall lord or how how much we back away from you i i thank you that no matter what you're in our hearts you are in our souls you are right beside us as we walk through this crazy thing called life mm -hmm. i i want to ask you to bless my best friend and his two beautiful amazing daughters i love them beyond belief and i pray that you continue to be with them lord you continue to walk down that path with them you continue to show them the right way lord i pray that no matter what happens in the physical, that you will always be there and there will always be a way that Chris and his 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 girls will find that way and find that strength within you, Lord. I pray that you are with Natalia. I pray that you you watch over her and you guide her. And I know that in her heart, she has you but i know she doesn't verbalize it and i know i know she's at that stage where i was lord where she doubts and she doesn't believe and she's unsure and but in her heart i see i can see in her heart that you're there i can see in her eyes that you're there i can see that when we're together you are there and i i thank you for that lord i i pray that you give Dave and Kathy the guidance they need and the strength they need and the help they need to be there for my daughter, to be there to help her instead of bring her down. I pray that you bless them. I pray that no matter what, they all will come through and, and they will stay happy and healthy and in my hopes also find you, Lord. I pray that you will always be with Eddie anytime he walks out this door. It is a scary world. And a lot of times we don't, I, I don't know if he's coming home because of how scary this world is. And, and I know you are with him as well, Lord. And I pray that you will always be there and you will always continue to bless. And you will always keep him safe and keep his partner safe and all of his coworkers, that they always make it home to their families. I pray that you touch EJ's heart and you hold him in your arms. And I know that he was given to me for a reason. Mm -hmm. I know that you knew what you were doing when you gave him to me. He has taught me so much, Lord, that I thought I would never learn patience and acceptance and understanding even when someone can't speak understanding what they're still feeling and meaning. Mm -hmm. I pray that you continue to give me the strength to be EJ's rock, to be his comfort and safe, safe space. Mm -hmm. I pray that you 
hold all of us and in your in your loving arms and and bless us all with a happy healthy life and i pray lord that we get some sleep tonight and in the morning when we wake up we can thank you lord we can appreciate that you allowed us to wake up another day and to live in your name and glorify your name i pray that no matter what we will always find the right path back to you and to be with you and to love you and to always honor you and cherish you there are vows in a marriage and there are vows with you lord and i vow to obey and honor and cherish and love and even in death there will never be parting. I will always be with you. I thank you again, Lord, for this amazing opportunity. This was definitely one of the most exciting and inspiring things that I have ever been a part of. And I thank you for for giving Chris that strength to start this podcast and 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 belief in himself and without you this wouldn't be possible so thank you again lord and i pray that no matter what you will never forsake us and and then and i know you won't but i pray that no matter what you will always be here in our hearts and our souls and our minds in jesus mighty name i pray amen amen You have just listened to Tea Time with Chris, a podcast filled with hope, faith, joy, love, and occasional laughter. We hope you enjoyed it and continue to stay up to date with us at teatimewchris.com. God bless.